Welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and this is RJ's Invisible. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> RJ is off on an adventure, um, so I'll tell you about that in the uh, farmhouse section. So let's get right into it. Um, oh, when did you know my computer now is acting ridiculous? All right, in the chapel, we have 2 Thessalonians 3 3, and it is, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one so um, we have something going on that is a little bit different we're actually going to edit this film uh, which is something we don't do hardly ever but we're just get right on into in the barn stalls and you'll see why okay and it's something that i can't take the film with the laptop i had trouble taking it with my camera so at one point i accidentally shut off the phone camera trying to get the footage and that but i know we said we were downsizing but we've had two more incoming since the pig so <laughs> yeah we're kind of going the wrong way back pedaling um okay so let's get into in the barn stalls so first we have marshmallow back um marshmallow is i believe one of fudgy's babies i'd have to look it up for to be sure but anyway, we sold it as a show lamb to a youth, and that youth has since changed living conditions and is living with the dad, not the mom. The dad doesn't have a place to put the lamb. Anyway, crossfire, it ended up back here. RJ went and picked it up either Tuesday or Wednesday. Maybe it was Thursday. It was sometime during the week, and it's why we didn't podcast, because he was going to get the lamb. So um, that's when we were going to try and podcast together. But then things went crazy. So, um, the other thing that happened, I am super stoked about, it and I'm super happy that it happened. Um, so, in a roundabout way, there was this girl who is a child who wanted a hedgehog. Not me. Not me. Well, yes, it was me, but I didn't want one as a child. I wanted one as an adult. But anyway um rabbit hole you know just going off whatever uh getting distracted trying to get back to the story here we go there was a girl who wanted a hedgehog real bad she gets a hedgehog the hedgehog is now a year and a half old it hasn't been handled or out of its cage they just kind of clean up after it and they said it stinks and all that kind of stuff uh long story short christy's got a hedgehog <laughs> And yeah, I'm tickled about it. I have wanted one. My daughter actually started to send me links off Craigslist of baby ones. And um, I have been to that point for a while. Um, Y'all know that I had Charlotte the hamster. Um, had her for many years. And she passed away. Broke my heart. I cried. Okay, yes, over a hamster. I'm good. Um, her ball does not fit the hedgehog, though. So I'm going to have to go and get a bigger ball because I want this little guy to be able to run around at night. So, um, yeah. Uh, he hasn't been handled. And I have this footage that I'm going to actually stop and cut in here. Now, please keep in mind, number one, it's taken on my phone. Number two, when I tried to take it off the stand, I accidentally hit the button that shut it down. So, it's not that I edited it, it's that I'm going to try and make it look okay together. Um, and then, of course, I don't know how long of a section it was. It didn't seem that long to me, but I've been sitting there holding the hedgehog, waiting for it to unroll. And I've been doing that for days, so it was shorter than the first time I did it. I, I don't know it. I don't know how long it is. So we're going to put it in, and we're going to do that right here. Okay, so today we're going to do something just a little bit different. Um, I am going to show you a new baby we took in um a young lady just had to have it and it's something that i've wanted for a while and she hasn't handled it so he's really i can't say he's aggressive yeah he takes gloves um but he's getting better um his little bag here stinks i'll, I'll just tell you that the rest of the cage is really clean but this Hey baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
I know. And yes, he's kind of hissing. Hey, I see a face. You didn't roll up so tight today. I see a face. Guys, whoo! <laughs> okay. Might not see a face now. But I know, I know. Okay, relax, relax. It is hard to handle them with these gloves, but if you don't, you end up hurt, don't you? Okay, so this little guy, you can see his nose right here. See, he's kind of uncurling, and the little pine chips will fall away. Yeah, there he is. So this is Duke. And I normally keep my hands in the cage when I hold him because he started to unroll in my hands. And you can see his little nose. I don't know if you, what you can see on the camera, but you can see his little nose. And if he was truly, truly like throwing a fit or upset, he, uh, you wouldn't see his nose. Um, they can curl up and, and just really a tight ball. And the only thing that you'd see is just a little bit. You wouldn't see his face at all. So, and they make a hissing sound. Duke, come on. Anyway, but a little girl had him, and she never played with him, and they can actually be non-aggressive, and their spines can lay down in a way that they're not so prickly, but when he rolls up in a ball, they're, they're spiked and ready to go, so um, when he's relaxed, he's not so spiky, and you actually can touch him, uh, but of course, poor Duke has been neglected for a year and a half. He's not been handled. He's not been messed with. He's been left in a cage. Uh, given mealworms every once in a while. They thought that was a good treat. And so, which it is. Um, I picked him up some mealworms. And he eats them a little bit. I just kind of sprinkle some over his food. But um, I don't think I would want to live in just this little cage. So, in the evening, he is much, much more active. Oh, he's getting ready to unroll. Go unroll. Go unroll. And I will tell you, the first thing he does is look for an escape route whenever he unrolls. So, oh, I don't know, I'm a little tighter. I'm sorry. Let me roll in a little bit. And normally when I do it, I kind of give him the option so you don't have to see his face so that his face can unroll. And his face is up against the glove so that he can kind of scout a... What do you call it? An escape route. But I wanted you guys to see his face if he doesn't roll. So, but, and I do it this way if he, uh, are you going to unroll? And it does take a little bit, so not gonna let I may have to edit. Roll him up to show you. I'm hoping that y'all uncoil. Like I said, we might actually have to, to edit this video. Oh, there he goes. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Oh, there you go. Boop. There he goes. Now I just kind of leave him alone. Oh, he found his water. And back in his thing. I hope you guys could see that. <laughs> uh, but that's the only little thing. And he's not um, actually curled up in his little thing there. Um, he's moving around still. So, he tends to do that, but we do this several times a day and just try to get him so that he likes being handled or doesn't associate it with anything bad. So, and I do do it inside the cage because right now I'm scared if he was to jump because they do um, this hoppy thing and they jump a little bit and see he's doing it in his kennel. I don't know if you can see it, but... And it's just their way of warning you. So he'll sit there and he'll then try and put his face to it. And then when he thinks you're in imminent danger, he'll curl up in a okay. ball. So took it off the stand and shut you down. So sorry about that one. But let's see if we can get a good picture in here of this guy. There he is. Oh, you're all right. He's starting to curl up right there. As long as we don't want his house, he, oh, see, there's that jump thing I was telling you about. He's just kind of warning us, don't you come any closer. 
I will curl up in a ball and spike you. He is sweet though. He just needs a little more love and attention. He's a good guy. And these are the little rocks I was talking about. They're just, um, he pushes them around is all. He's got a little food bowl with pine shavings in it right now, but in his water bowl. Oh, hey, 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 you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. I promise. You're fine. Let me see if he's like, go away. But he is doing better. Um, the lady that was the intermediary for this um, little hedgehog, she had worked with him and worked with him and worked with him and tried to get him to unroll. She carried him around for over half an hour, she said one day. He never would unroll. So I'm thinking that he's liking it here and he likes, you know, slowly liking because every time I do it, um, it gets a shorter and shorter time from him to unroll. And sometimes we'll do it three, four times right in a row. And as long as he understands that, you know, when he unrolls, he can escape. We're not going to hurt him. So that's what we're trying to do. And he is just so doggone cute. That is Duke the Hedgehog that has joined Straw Family Farm. So, what'd you think of Duke? Isn't he just the cutest thing? Okay, so, um, there, we had put out on Facebook when I first got him, which was, I think the same day that RJ went and got Marshmallow, the lamb, to be honest with you. It was either, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I, I don't remember. But anyway, um, we had put out on Facebook that he needed a name. You know, nothing comes to the farm without a name. We don't do this number thing. We don't do this so-and-so's so-and-so's daughter you know um so everything needed a name a lot of people want to name it sonic or spike or i don't know i was calling it bunny when i first brought him home because he he does this little hoppy thing when he's scared it's cute um anyway so i was calling him bunny and then um i really like the name quillow and it's off of over the hedge but it's for a porcupine so I don't know. I really liked it. But RJ, somebody else said to use Duke. And RJ fell in love with that name. He goes, Mom, that is just his name. And I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah, it's not Bunny anymore. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so, that happened. And I am, I really am super excited. Um, you'll see in the video I, I said that his little bag stinks. I scrubbed that thing and oh my god the <clears throat> I probably should have brought it out here to show you. So it looked like it was brown and black uh, spotted um, like a leopard skin or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It's not. It's supposed to be white. It literally turned the water brown the minute I put it in. And I just hand washed it because I don't know really know how it's supposed to be washed but holy cow that thing was disgusting um so yeah i scrubbed it and it is now on the dryer drying i've got laundry going and i put it on the dryer to dry so i just like i said hand washed it i used apple smelling soap on it so that you know it'd be okay um just something to cut the smell i told you it stunk really bad and hedgehogs aren't naturally dirty so um yeah, I, I just don't know. Ugh, it was gross. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Uh, all right, in the barn stalls. I still don't have, no, I'm sorry, we're done with that one. Uh, mending fences. We still don't have a list done, but we do know we're going to put something in in this um, south house pen, or we call it a yard pen. I'm going to put some kind of stall, but I think it's going to be for our young cattle. So we're going to make it a little bit bigger than we made, the stall, a little bit bigger than we made for the milk goats and the sheep because I only have the one milk goat this year that's being bred. And then I've got two that will be bred next year. So, yeah, the most we're going to have is three. And I haven't decided where they're going to be. I think I want them closer down towards the um, garden for their pen, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um... So I've got that to do. And then the biggest part of our list, you know, in October we close down and are open by appointment only. 
and the biggest part of our repair list that goes through the winter uh, and into spring is repairing just the old stalls. The wind this year and the rain, we've got to get all the tin nailed back down, um, replace pieces of tin that need it, uh, finish the stalls out in the horse run, um, just that kind of stuff. And I keep saying I'm going to get it done this year, I'm going to get it done this year. I've got to get on it and just really get it done. So starting next week, um, starting next week, and I'll tell you what that was about just a second, um, after my trip, and I'll tell you about that in, uh, in the farmhouse, um, I'm going to get on it and get stuff done. I'm bound and determined to make a list, get through it, get more organized, balancing the job and the farm. So, because right now I'm just running from thing to thing to thing. So, <laughs> it's okay. Things are getting done. Nothing's going without nothing, you know, but I just don't like how unorganized it is. I am very organized normally and I just feel out of control right now. So, um, it is what it is. In the yarn farm. Okay, so I've been working on this and it's the only thing yarny that I have. I um, finished the mitts. We already put that out there. We have the drawing going on. If you have not made a suggestion for what on what we should do for a Christmas project, and please don't think small. We, we tend to do over the top. We do as a family and everything that people normally spend on Christmas, we spend doing for someone else. So um, you can go back and watch that the last video and hear all about some of the stuff that we've done in the past. If you have followed us all along, you know we have done everything from 80 Christmas stockings sent overseas to men serving in Iraq to spending all day at the shelter, giving everyone the day off at the shelter and caring for hundreds of animals there. Um, all kinds of stuff. So anything um one year we did well two years now we've actually done a live nativity so make a suggestion we have i think two entered right now so get your name in there you got a what 33.3 percent chance right now both entries have a 50 50 chance of winning it so we shall see um anyway uh last week i introduced you to um my favor that i picked up at get stitching um, this one was from Angora Jane and there was another one by Louder Farms both local made in Oklahoma products kind of thing so I said I was going to spin the two of them together they have alpaca in common this one was more soft than the other one just because this one is it had more alpaca in it than it had wool and the other one had more wool than it had alpaca so I pinched off, oh, just like this much, you know, off of each one, played with it. I had talked last week a little bit about the pooling. I didn't want to barber pull it because of the pooling issues. I just don't like that look. Um, so I thought that I would blend it, and then I didn't like it blended at all, and I didn't like, so anyway, needless to say, <clears throat> I would be spinning the two of them separate. And I'm thinking of doing some color work with them, um, especially some Tunisian color work would be amazing. So, yeah, there's that. Then, uh, the Wamego Winter Wool Fest is coming up. <coughs> <coughs> mm, sorry. We will not be attending as a booth, but I will be attending as a teacher. So, we'll see how many people actually come to see RJ. And how many people come to see me? <laughs> um, I probably will teach two different classes and just go from there. Um, and of course, that gives me time to shop. Yay! We'll see. Um, there was one year that I, I had time to shop and I just didn't pick up anything that I felt was amazing. Um, there was some lovely stuff. Not going to lie. But the lovely stuff, I have wool here, and I can make the lovely stuff. So the only time that I really want to buy something is when it's something I don't have, like the alpaca. 
that is blended in. Now we had alpacas, and if you want to go back and see that story about the old well that we believe poisoned them and then had to, the government stepped in and shut it down, it, it was bad. So um, it was not a good thing. And um, anyway, we're going to move on because I'm going to get upset. So uh, yeah, we're, we cannot have camelids on the farm. So no llamas, no alpacas, no camels, no anything. So um, that's why I got this too. And so I tend to buy things that I don't have access to here or I can't make myself. So, and I dye yarn, so color has nothing to do with it. It all has to do with texture and uh, what kind of fleece it is and that kind of stuff. So I did have one year to shop and just didn't find anything. So I'm hoping this year I can find something just absolutely amazing. And they have, <clears throat> they have alpaca up there, but it's not even as soft as this, some of them. Um, I don't know if it's because Missouri gets a little bit harsher weather or the, where they're at. Um, and I know that a lot of the alpacas that a lot of the alpaca people that go to that fest are from Missouri. And then there's some from Kansas and they all get harsher weather. Maybe that's it. I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to have to be something amazing and I will have time to shop. So just saying. All right, moving on to, we've done mending fences. We've done, in the barn stalls, what are we at? Um, we'll go within the fields. Um, so the tiny house is kind of on hold because uh, you just can't get anything down there. This year has been so wet. And what people don't know is it's not flat. There is, as you go through the, I say path, it's not a path. It's, it's either going to be the driveway <clears throat> or I'm going to have to move it because there's this big dip and it fills with water and even right now you have to have your rubber boots on to go out there and get your to get to the tiny house so if we put a trailer or a truck down there to start working it gets stuck you have to get the tractor and pull it out <laughs> just saying been there and done that not happening again so that's been put on hold and i'm actually hoping hoping that maybe this winter i had it set up where the guys could come out and do the trusses and help get them covered because I don't want the trusses to get wet and that kind of stuff so the trusses have to go up in a time frame that it's dry on this day and then it's got to get the tin right on top of it and the skylights in so yeah it's not I mean the walls have to go around too but in order to protect them it has to have the skylights and the um, roof on top of it within days you can't they just can't get wet and stuff. So timing is everything. And so far, it's not helping me. I haven't had the right timing. So it is what it is. But it's going to get done. <coughs> All right. I guess in the farmhouse is up. Um, unless I've forgotten something. So in the farmhouse, we have some exciting news going on. And the first is that the big boy 4014 or 1440 whatever came through um we spent the afternoon with a young man i'm gonna put his link down below he train chases like people tornado chase he is just starting out he's a small youtube channel which is fine um but he came and we own the right of way, for those that don't know, we own the right of way and pay taxes on the land that the railroad tracks run on. So, um, we have front row view to everything, and, and our crossing doesn't have the arms that come down or anything. So, it is a 100% natural, unobstructed, <clears throat> great for videoing or viewing trains. So, anyway, the big boy came through yesterday, and we met. And I can't remember his name, but we've been texting. That's what that text was that went off. Um, he's got video up, and him and I have been texting back and forth. And I cannot remember his name, so I went to his channel to look, and guess what? He doesn't have it on there. So we've been texting back and forth, and I told him that, you know, people need a name and a face to follow a personal thing. And he is an aspiring I want to say a meteorologist, but he's into, he's doing a communications journalism 
uh, degree at college. So, um, yeah, he's a college kid. He's 22. He's exactly the same age as RJ. Um, really sweet kid. Very, there was two other people with him and they came over and pet the pigs and all that stuff. It was cute. Um, one of the guys that was with him, Charlotte, like, was through the fence trying to rub on his leg. It was hilarious. I, we were teasing him saying he had a new boy, new girlfriend. So anyway, but they had fun. They had started at like three in the morning to go chase the train from one end of Oklahoma to the other. And he is documenting its journey. He also documents some others and talks about the old trains and, and um, Union Pacific, I believe in general, but just common stuff so um yeah we had a lot of fun meeting him his link is going to be down below and he's also in our other channels we've met section so click on his thing if you like him like subscribe you know like i said just an up and coming a good kid so um i know we don't have a, a big i told him i said we don't have a huge audience but we do have you know like 13 1400 people and he goes, if they all just watch. And I said, well, it'll depend, you know. And I told him, not everybody's into trains or whatever. But we had kids out here. We had people. The driveway was pretty packed. Um, we had a lot of fun. We met some people that we hadn't planned on being here. And, um, yeah, we just let them pull in the driveway, too. <laughs> so everybody was off the road. Nobody got wrecked. Um, nobody... Uh, got hurt or anything like that and I got an awesome awesome picture of that train and I'm telling you it was amazing so and being that close to that big of a train was just awesome so anyway that happened go check out his channel and uh, hopefully you'll like it if you like it you know and it's all trains centered around Oklahoma so here in the heartlands um, RJ is with his girlfriend, well, was with his girlfriend. Um, she had a formal thing to do for Rodeo Queen, and he went down there Friday night, and then he'll be back today. He's going to rope, and of course, you know he does everything so that he can stop and go roping. So he roped last night. He was with her Saturday morning. Then last night he roped, and he's roping on the way home. He'll be home probably 8 o'clock or so tonight, which is when I leave for work, and that's why Mr. Invisible isn't here. So, he's been awfully quiet today, too. Um, so, that's going on. Uh, as for next week, you probably will get RJ by himself. Um, I'm going to try and ask him to, you know, I had to do this one by myself, so it's his turn to do one by himself. But, reason being, I will be gone to Dallas-Fort Worth. I am super excited, as you can tell by the grin that grows. Um, so... I've got a girlfriend whose daughter is in a ballet company down there, and they're performing the Nutcracker Suite. So I've got to remember to take my tissues. I went shopping for all of my stuff. Then at the recommendation of a friend, they said, you need to put it on the alumni page that you're going to be down there. And I didn't really think a whole lot of people, I, I don't know. I just never think that anybody from high school really remembers me. And it's not like growing up in a small town and everybody's still around and just one or two moved away and oh they're back you know it's not that our school is closed down it is over in Europe it is a million miles away we were from all over the country to start with came together for high school and then we we're scattered to the wind after that so I don't know it's just a bleep in most people's lives and I don't ever think that I am impressionable or someone that someone I just always think of myself as blending into the background and not really making a difference so and that's true to today um, I'm just not one to be I don't know I just don't think people will really remember me which I don't want them to remember me I want them to remember me, remember any deed or kind act that I did so but then there's a part of me that kind of wants somebody to remember me. So, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't ever feel like I'm very memorable. So, um, I did put out on our Facebook alumni page that um, I was going to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 
and that I had plans on Friday, but that on Saturday I would have free time if anybody wanted to do lunch or something, you know. And within a very short time, I got a phone call. And a girlfriend, who I know she knows me from high school and remembers me and stuff. I just, I don't know. Anyway, she lives about 150 miles, she said, from Dallas-Fort Worth, straight south. And if I'm coming five and a half hours south, she's going to come two and a half hours north. And we are going to spend the day together. And so there's some other people that I know will probably get together. So I'm going to have my ballet time and my baron time. Y'all have Miller time. If you're from Bitburg, baron, from Bitburg, Germany, we have baron time. So uh, we have our own Bitburger beer. I guess we could say we have Bitburger time. Eh doesn't sound the same. Baron is our um, mascot. So we're all Bitburg Barons and we have Baron time. So I'm super stoked about that. Um, I don't know if anybody else will come, but Ina and I are getting together and that's that. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm super excited because I haven't seen Ina. We have each other's phone numbers and all that stuff. We don't talk very often. She's a school teacher and very busy. Of course, y'all know everything that I do. So, I can't say that we're as close as we were in, in high school, but we're definitely adult friends. And um, I haven't actually laid eyes on her since 1985. It might have been early 86. She left before me, and I left in 86. But she might have left the first part of 86, because I left in the middle of 86. So, yeah. Yeah. It's been that long and 23, 24 years, almost 25 years So, since I've seen her. And I am super excited to see her. Um, she looks great in pictures. So we'll see. I'm just like, eee! So that's going on. I don't know if you'll get RJ to podcast next week. But if he does, he will take care of the drawing and give away that yarn. So if you don't know how to enter for that yarn, go to the last week's video and check it out and it'll tell you all you have to do is make a suggestion in the box below so yeah all that happened okay so recap lots of things going on new hedgehog new lamb in i don't even know if i mentioned the new lamb that's great okay so in the barn stalls there's a new lamb that we went and got i think we did i don't know what i've talked about so anyway don't forget to enter for the drawing don't forget to go check out the uh, other channel with the big boy footage. He's got amazing footage. I just took some pictures. If you want the experience of this, he took awesome footage. Um, and I, I can't wait to see him edit it all together. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And there's a certain part in there that I think is funny that I hope he figures a way to edit it in. So, we'll see. Um, lots going on. Lots personal. Lots to work on trying to get a better schedule to balance work and the farm just saying so all right i'm off of here and i will talk to you guys next time have a great day bye